Hi everyone, I'm Katie Miller and I'm an OpenShift Developer Advocate at Red Hat. In this video, I'm going to show you how to migrate a Java application from Heroku to Red Hat's platform as a service, OpenShift, as detailed in this blog post on OpenShift.com. The Java application I've chosen to use for this demo is the Spring Pet Clinic app, which uses Spring MVC, Hibernate, and a PostgreSQL database. On Heroku, I have the application running on Tomcat using the web app runner and Java 7. My machine is running Fedora 19. Let's have a quick look at the source code for the application, which Heroku has called Salty Basin 8288. Has a typical Java Maven structure with a pom.xml and a source directory containing the code and tests. The first step to getting this app ported to OpenShift Online is to sign up for an account, which lets you put three apps online for free. You can do that by heading over to OpenShift.com and hitting Sign Up. Once you have an OpenShift Online account, you should install the RHC client tools. There are instructions on how to do that for a variety of operating systems in the Dev Center section on OpenShift.com under Documentation, Installing the Client. You'll need to have Ruby and Git installed on your system. Once you've done that, go to the command line and run the command rhc setup. This will make sure your machine is ready for secure communication with the OpenShift broker. The first time you run the command, you'll need to give your OpenShift online credentials and upload an SSH key to OpenShift, which will be generated for you if you don't already have one. Now that I'm all set up, I can create an OpenShift application. To do that, I use the command rhc app create, then give the name of the app, I'm going to call it Pet Clinic, and then specify the cartridges I want included, which is going to be Tomcat 7 and Postgres 9.2. So cartridges are the pre-configured technology components that run in OpenShift's app containers, which are called gears. This will take a minute or so to run, so while it's going, let's have a look at the Pet Clinic app running on Heroku. So you can see we have the option here to list all pets. And if we do that, you can see that we don't actually have any. So let's add some so we have some data in the application. So I'm going to create a new pet, a dog called Bear with a weight of 10. And I'm also going to add a cat called Salem with a weight of 7. And now when we go to list all pets, you can see that we actually have some data in our application. Let's now go back and have a look and see how our app creation is going. So that's complete and we can see that a Postgres database was created and we've got some details there for that. We also now have the URL of our new app, which I'm going to copy. We have the SSH details, the details of the Git remote, and also where a copy of this has already been cloned to on our local machine. So if we go back to the browser now, let's check out the app that we get out of the box. And it's a pretty standard Hello World app. Let's head back to the terminal and have a look at the source for our new app. So if we have a look here at the structure that's been created, this is because we chose the Tomcat cartridge. So we've got a pom.xml and also a source directory with some Java code in it. There's also a web apps directory, which is where we can put pre-built binaries if we want to deploy that way instead. And if I have a look at hidden directories, we can see there's a .openshift directory. This is part of every OpenShift cartridge and it's where important config lives. So if we have a look in there, see we've got a number of directories. We have action hooks, which is where you can put scripts to hook into different points of the application lifecycle. We have config, which is where all the Tomcat configuration files are if you wish to change those. There's cron if we want to schedule any jobs. And there's also markers where we can put files to enable and disable uh, particular behaviors such as hot deployment. So source and the pom.xml here contain the source that's producing that Hello World app that we saw. And we don't really need that, so let's remove it. So 
So I'm just going to check what action I've done, add that in git, and commit. Now I want to copy across the existing Heroku code and there are a number of ways I could do this. I'm going to use git so that I retain the git commit history from the existing app. So I'm going to use the git remote command to add an upstream and it's just going to be that directory right here on my local machine. Although I could also pull from another a remote like GitHub as I do in the blog post. And now I'm going to do a pull and bring in all that code. And now we've got both the OpenShift directories and that config and all our Heroku files as well. I'm not going to need the Heroku specific files so I'm going to remove the proc file and also system.properties which was just specifying the version of Java which works differently on OpenShift. So let's have a look, we've got some files deleted so I'm going to add those in git and do a commit Now I'm going to add the OpenShift specific config that I need and to help with that I'm going to go back to that blog post on openshift.com. So if I scroll down here I've got a section to add into the pom.xml and this is just a profile for when that build is occurring on OpenShift. So I'm going to open up the pom.xml go to the bottom here after the closing build tag and just paste in that profile section with the new OpenShift profile. I'm also going to grab from the blog here these environment variables which make up the connection string for Postgres. I'm going to go into the application context file and go down to this database URL and change that from the Heroku environment variable to the equivalent on OpenShift. One last thing I want to do is add a marker file for hot deployment so that when we're doing those builds there isn't actually any downtime. To do that all I do is create an empty file called hot deploy in the OpenShift markers directory. So now I'll just check what changes I've made. I'm going to do a get an add and then I'm going to commit all of that. And now it's time to push all those changes to the cloud. And to do that, it's as simple as git push. So this is going to take a bit. So we're going to see the Maven build running, everything going on to create the new version of our application, which is going to be the same, hopefully, as our Heroku application. So you can see because we've enabled hot deploy with that marker, the cartridge isn't actually being stopped. It's just going to create the new build with Maven and then sync it across when it's completed. So while that's doing its thing, I might open another tab and get started on the next step, which is migrating across that data. So I'm going to go back to our Heroku app 
And now I want to take a data dump of what we've got in our Heroku database. So to do that, I'm going to run the command whoop, Heroku add-ons and add Postgres backups for our app, which is Salty Basin 8288. And I believe I've already done this, so Heroku may complain about that. Okay, already installed. So now we want to actually run this capture command. And there we go. And to get that, I'm going to use curl. I'm going to call it latest.dump. We're going to use the URL we get from running the command Roku backups. URL. Great. Now we have that latest.dump file that we need. So now if we head back over to our other window, you can see that the build has completed. So let's go back to the browser and have a look at what we now get. So here's what we had previously. Let's do a refresh. And here's the site. If we go over and look at the pets though, you can see that the data of course isn't there. So let's go back to the command line now and work on getting that data from Heroku migrated into our OpenShift database. To help with that, we're going to use the RHC port forward command, which will forward the PostgreSQL port 5432 for us and create the secure tunnel. And now we have port forwarding going. So I'm just going to put that in the background and leave it running. And now, because I have Postgres installed locally. I'm going to run this command locally, but you could alternatively SSH in and run your Postgres commands whoop, wrong way there instead. Now I'm going to need a username. Not quite sure what that is off the top of my head, but if I come over and run RHC app show in another window, this will spit out the value of a whole bunch of uh, environment variables and a lot of the useful information about our app. Alright, so now we've got that. Just going to copy the username here, go back across and paste it into my command. Next thing to specify here is the database, which is going to have the same name as our app, Pet Clinic. And then what I actually want to pipe in, which is what we get from this data dump. Now it's asking me for the password which I can grab also from here and paste in. And we've got a couple of integrity errors, but it doesn't look like we've got anything too significant there. So let's go across and see if our data is actually being entered. And yes, we're now able to access it. So there you have it. We've successfully migrated our app from Heroku to OpenShift. The two main steps to do that being changing the POM, us to add the OpenShift config, and also updating the environment variables used by the database config. Thank you very much for watching.